best set. We the best, still is room for improvement and move. We the best set. We the best set. We the best set, still is room for improvement and we the best set. We the best set. We the best, our presence is we the best set. We the best set. We the best set, our presence is felt like a black baby Man, it's hip hop game, yo, I bleed. Never mislead. Me a carbon copy, unlikely. Man, I ain't faking with it. Man, you catch me in the lab like a baker with it. Trying to get my cake up. You ride best, need to get your weight up and take off the makeup. Man, I'm on my PE. I can't forget about the blessings from the essence. Come on, dude, gotta teach a lesson. Now everybody's Smith and Wesson. Little this, little that. Maybe because they just a little young. Come on, scrap. My piece is connected to my telekinesis. To reach your nephews and nieces in this crisis, we need it. The youth is misleaded, the gang's bleeding. Who gives a fuck? Ruck, ruck. Everybody duck, duck. I blow about the bus. I know y'all fed up. That's why I'm in the lab whipping it up. It's the remedy, the plan, the answer, the solution. Sitting in my studio, plot the revolution. Rewrite the constitution. Nah, burn that motherfucker. Cause I'm not the one that's gonna get beat like Tanya Tucker. Cause I'm here for the general population criminal we killing all the information getting a subliminal we're giving all the tools to the children because you need fresh water and soil if you attempt to plant a seed and i don't want to bleed less i'm bleeding life lessons to the rhythm of a song that can serve as confession with compression on my vocals squeeze it like a chokehold if you want to make change you gotta start local and if you want to make change you gotta stand tall teach them all that you gotta get up after you fall a final call to my people get it down to the letter yeah we got a little Something that'll make you feel better Here you better, best believe better. I'ma put in work Cause if worse come to worse My peoples come first now Let your mind rest on that It's a proven fact That I'ma hit them with the artifacts Flamboyant pro brother from the 412 Check my resume This is what your bruh bruh do Stay sucker free Never let a hater get close to me The Reaganomic effect Got the whole room vex check the way I put it down with the compounds and minerals to be my own general, the illmatic one. My mind illuminates like the sun. Knowledge is for self, but you gotta teach one. And I don't know if you didn't heard, but it's up to me to spread the word. Cause the game is so contagious, so aggravated when you spit black power. I Radio won't play it. Medication, these MDs can't provide. Dedication, these MCs can't supply. Remedies for all these maladies. Inside, I'm the illest like jellyfish at low tide. You're hanging off the side of the SS mechanic. Spewing whack rhymes, polluting the Atlantic. Microphone queasy, lyrically seasick. Ain't coming drama mean. Stop sucking my MC dick. For real, spirit empty. Lack of soul, you illin'. My cup runneth over. Catch the knowledge I'm spilling. Hell yeah, I'm old school. I'll rep it till I die Class of 89 when hip-hop was alive Somewhere down the line Rap music got dyspeptic I'm here to clear ears Marcus J antiseptic Like two rhymes Never call Let a leader lead What I got is what you want And what you need Man, this game got me feeling like a Malcolm They trying to X me out But I'ma take a different route Hear the game out I'm the one that the haters all talk about Hypnotic picture scripture giver So you can be ignited to my soul food cypher Movement Chuck said hit him in the head with the blueprint You know the recipe Never let the system get the best of me And if it get the best of me The seeds won't get the recipe Hip-hop with no anatomy Yo, that's tragedy Tragedy
Hello everyone and welcome to session three of the Global Black Feminist Reading Circle. My name is Randy Henderson and I am one of the Black Feminist Reading Circle members of this online group. This session runs from January 20th until June 2nd and includes two week long breaks. Our democratically selected reading material is Harriet A. Washington's book, Medical Apartheid, The Dark History of Medical Experimentation on Black Americans from Colonial Times to the Present. Our book group meets each Tuesday evening from 6.30 to 8 on the Google Plus Hangouts on Air platform. You may find the, Glo the Global Black Feminist Reader Circle on Google Plus, YouTube, and Facebook. And always feel free to join us in reading our story together. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the Global Black Feminist Reading Circle. This is the third book we're reading, session three, which now runs through June 16th. So we are coming on down the road. We have closed the hangout to the existing members, but you are still welcome to watch us live on YouTube or to visit our archives. Uh, at YouTube. I should say my name is Michelle Odom. I am the moderator for tonight and one of the co-hosts of the Reading Circle along with Randy Danielle Henderson and I'm located in Brooklyn, New York. And let's introduce the other conversationalists for tonight. Uh, Vanita? Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Vanita Walker, and I am joining you all from Cromwell, Connecticut. Welcome. And Georgette? My name is Georgette Moses. I'm participating from Columbia, South Carolina, and I am happy we are moving along in this book. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And our newest member, Edwina. Hi, my name is Edwina Marchenko. Glad to be here. I'm participating from Utah. I'm here with my son who's in the uh, National Guard for um, Utah. Okay. Kim B has joined the Hangout. Hi, everybody. I'm Kim. I'm in New York. Chapter 11, The Children's Crusade, Research Targets Young African Americans, tells the story of the dangers black children, especially boys, have faced at the hands of American medical researchers on a never-ending quest to medicalize the problem of violence. Washington highlights a few of the most harmful experiments and medical procedures to which our children have been subjected, including the lobotomy, exemplified by the work of Orlando J. Andy, MD, and the University of Mississippi between the 1930s and 1970s where psychiatrists and neurosurgeons who practiced these blind cut lobotomies simply inserted crude tools such as the ice piccolon and blindly swept them back and forth within the brain, cutting all the connecting nerves sight unseen at one fell swoop. Another example is Maryland's XYY study, or search for the mean gene, carried out by DeGamber, Borgonker, PhD, and Johns Hopkins University during the 1970s, where parents were lied to, and these boys were subjected to stigmatizing, stigmatizing testing, psychological assessments, and blood draws in a three-year experiment that could, could have branded them as latent criminals for life. Another example is the fenfluramine study undertaken by Professor Gail Wasserman and New York City's New York State Psychiatric Institute and Columbia University's Lowenstein Center during the 1990s. 
Here they performed experiments upon at least 126 boys, most of whom were between the ages of 6 and 10, utilizing the drug fenfluramine. Fenfluramine is a cardiotoxic and brain damaging substance, which at the same time had never been used on children under the age of 12. Another example is the repair and maintenance study conducted by Kennedy Krieger Institute and Johns Hopkins University during the 1990s, where scientists intentionally exposed children to lead in dilapidated housing to evaluate new, cheaper lead abatement techniques. And finally, the Violence Initiative, championed by Frederick Goodwin in the National Institute of Mental Health in the 90s, where inner city boys were compared to rhesus monkeys in the jungle. Her presentation also highlights the ways in which parental consent is disregarded and undermined as researchers doggedly pursue a single-minded agenda of proving black boys are born criminals, more likely than others, to be violent. She reviews ethical failures of the doctors and scientists in the cases cited, and she considers the social effects of racist research and raises concerns about current and future research agenda and practices. Murder of the Black Mind, the lobotomy, Orlando J. Andy, MD, and University of Mississippi between 1930s and the 1970s. The city of Baltimore is ablaze this week with protesters and rioters who are angry about the killing of Freddie Gray, the 25-year-old man who died April 19th, just days after an encounter with police left him with grave spinal injuries, as well as black men and women and children killed by police officers on a daily basis across the country. In our readings this week, we learn of the connection some white researchers have made between the violence of rioting and mental illness. Orlando Andy, MD, a neurosurgeon who practiced lobotomies on children for many years, once observed, the kind of brain damage that could necessitate such radical surgery might be manifested by participation in the Watts uprising. And in 1967, Boston City Hospital physicians received a $600,000 grant for brain research on urban rioters. Lobotomies were also used to ensure the docility of prisoners and in the 1960s, as a government-funded cure for urban rioters. Question number one. Do you know urban rioters from the 1960s have been cured by lobotomies? Are these people at risk of having their actions med medicalized? Why or why not? Number two, is there a snowball's chance in hell? Their frustrations over the recent unjust killings of black men, women, and children will be met with compassion, empathy, or understanding. Why or why not? Number three. Why do you suspect some white people, including well-educated professionals, have such difficulty comprehending the anger, pain, and frustration, and the need to lash out black people experience in the face of oppression and injustice? Number four, what do you think about the people engaged in rioting now in Baltimore? Are they, in your opinion, 
mentally ill? Is there a better way for them to express their rage? And if so, what might that be? Oh, poor Baltimore. I keep hearing Kim say that. Remember Kim said that? <laughs> oh, <Baltimore. laughs> why, am I, why am I home? What do you think about the people engaging in rioting now in Baltimore? Are they, in your opinion, mentally ill? Is there a better way for them to express their rage? If so, what might it be? Well, now, I kind of listen to uh, the... Um, journalists pimping Baltimore riots today because that's exactly what it was. It's like reality TV for them. Um, no, they're not mentally ill um, per se. Um, These people are angry and they're upset. Now, there's two sides to every story, and then again, there's the truth, as they say. Um, the day as I was watching, um, I, I noticed the media um, approaching people that were less articulate, number one. And this is all for the reality TV. Mm -hmm. They were panning the rioters. And if you notice, these, a lot of these rioters were not grown men, these were teenagers who do not know how to vent their frustration and anger other than destruction. But let the media have it. It's just a bunch of black, wild animals that's running around, burning down CVS and old folks' homes. And it was just a, it was a happy mess. Um, there, of course, there are better ways to express our frustration. There were people, actually, um, folks that were there to support um, the cause and also there to clean up the mess that the opportunists which were teenagers mostly, you know, the, the problems they cause. And um, of course, we have to organize ourselves and organize our thoughts and stick to what our actual purpose is. You know, what is our intent? And the intent is not to burn down the place where you live. But, it's, but I, I was amazed by some of, the, some of the questions that some of the journalists asked. It was totally ridiculous. Um, and sometimes you can even expect to get ridiculous answers because of it. Mm. You know, why are you angry? <laughs> I'm like, why are you here? I, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, there are better ways of, of us um, expressing ourselves. And once again, bear in mind, a lot of the folks who are going to Bernie in Baltimore were young teenagers and they were opportunists and they didn't know any other way to express their anger. They weren't grown folks. You had ministers out there, people, grown folks living in the neighborhood, gathering together peacefully and also going into the city of Baltimore today to try to help clean up the mess. You know, so they can have the opportunity now to discuss the real issues because it's not one issue. Issues. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm going with it forever, but I won't. Okay, well, uh, anybody else? One thing I did, excuse me, I was upset about. My, uh, my son was at work, and, and, and uh, one of his co-workers that happens to be Caucasian looked at him and said, these are educated people, mind you, educated, and said, when are these people going to take responsibility? Why are they out there looting the place? So my son, which didn't have a lot of time to chat, because some folks have to work at work, <laughs> look, <laughs> some of us looked at him and said, well, I'm sure in the majority, and I would say in white neighborhood, maybe 99.9% .9 white area that we live in, if something was going on with them and they were angry, I could name about 30 guys off the top of my head who were down near Route 372, breaking in all white guys, opportunists. You know, so that just kind of give you an idea of where their heads are. You know, they, they, just, they don't want to look at what's happening. It's just they want to still make up this, this whole 
fallacy that we're just running wild animals with, with no agenda. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, I could, it's a longer story than that, but I'll just cut it short. But Clint was really kind of like, he wasn't even taken. You know, it, you're just used to it now. Somebody just saying something totally ridiculous and not asking him, so what do you think? The, Clint, explain to me. And that would have been, Clint said, if, you know, he would have asked me or said, well, Clint, explain to me what's going on. You know, so I can understand. Clint said, I've been more than happy. I took my lunch break, let's go and talk about it. But instead, that's not what's happening. And that's just a small example of what, our entire nation, most folks are thinking. You know, they're not asking you questions. They're drawing conclusions by what they see in the media. I'm done. Thank you. Anyone else? I think I would like to add uh, to what um, Vanita is saying. Um, and to express how perhaps some of these adolescent um, young people feel, especially after the Trayvon Martin uh, killing, uh, Michael Brown in Ferguson. Oh, the list goes on. Um, mysterious lynchings taking place in different um, states. I think there were a few in I read about in, in Texas. Um, the um, the uh, um, and now and Freddie. I got a son named Freddie, so I'm feeling this a little like. Some, the way my father would have t told me, it could have been you. It didn't have to be him. It could. They know that. I think they feel that it could have been any one of them. You know, who's next? Mm -hmm. And these children are enraged. And I was looking at a Tupac. Uh, video last night, and it's this young man prophesied that these children were going to raise sand eventually because they did not want to be subjected to what their parents and foreparents had to go through. The 90s was bad enough with the, um, the gangs. Uh, and, and, and feuding with the gangs and West Coast, East Coast, but this has turned into something more of a bigger picture than just uh, us um, feuding with each other. Mm -hmm. they, 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 you know, I was looking at, listening to this, this Tupac even got assassinated. Um, and. And, 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 and just listening to this young man, I, I believe his mother was part of the Black Panther Party at one point. Mm -hmm. and, and they said that he was also uh, a part of the Black Panther Party as well. And he came, he was talking about thug life. He, didn't, he said, this, he was saying that it didn't mean that we were thugs and thieves and we, we go around knocking old ladies in the head for their pocketbook. He, he was trying to express that we are uh, 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 tired of being uh, a, 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 a police but brutality, being abused, and used by the system, and taken advantage of. And I think that's what he meant by thug life. And these children have just taken, just picked up on it, even though this young man has passed on. I said they picked up on it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, I, guess, I guess the thing I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting some of the questions. Forgive me. I I'm, the thing that comes to mind the most for me. Um, I was driving yesterday when I heard that the National Guard was called in, and it just reminded me of the research that I did for um, a book that I'm writing on um, Baltimore for. Um, the week when um, Martin Luther King was killed and how 
African Americans were so in so much grief that the city burned, and so many so many cities burned. So that just left me very very heavy hearted because Baltimore was never rebuilt to the same, and a lot of those black businesses burned. So my 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 focus a lot of times is um, what do we do with each other to make a difference to make a change because burning burning up and and and, and throwing rocks and stuff like that there's got to be something else where um, there's so many groups I think that that I'm learning that there's so many groups out there that are doing good work we just have to kind of link them. And um, in terms of, of, of white people getting this, I think that, that the white people who want to get it, get it. And the ones who don't want to get it have an investment in capitalism. And they realize that, you know, we are a commodity and that, that they can sell us anything. Um, but it, do, it does hurt my heart. It really, it really, really um, does. And I trying to pull another one of the, the questions in, in, into my head, but um, I, think, I think I'll stop there because I forgot. There was one point I wanted to make, but it slipped away. Okay, well, when it comes back, you can tell us. Okay. Did we know you were a writer? I don't think we did. I, I don't think You've been we hiding did. it, Kim. I, I, I didn't really know. We just have such, such in-depth conversations to, you know, it's not time. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my book is entitled Baltimore City Blues. That's that's my book. And it's uh, uh, there's a content editor reading it now, so hopefully we can get it out there. But it's this whole scene about Baltimore burning. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, it is definitely burning. Georgette, did you want to talk about Baltimore? Well, I, I loved everyone's observations, and I just wanted to add, <laughs> hone in on that mental illness, and mm. that if you're doing the same thing and you're expecting a different outcome, well, that is kind of a a form of mental illness. So we had you had the peaceful protesters and then you had the violence but there wasn't enough attention given until the flames started uh, you know licking up buildings and that's where the cameras pointed their mm -hmm. lenses at Mm -hmm. And so I kept switching to, like Vanita, watching you know the, the conversation and, and trying to pay attention to the verbiage that was used on the different stations. And there was a definite difference between Al Jazeera, CNN International, regular CNN, and NB MSNBC. All right. And during the evening, like, like 4 a.m. at that time, you had uh, questions to individuals who looked like they had their feet on the ground, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, community leaders, the the, uh, the reverend of the church that was burned down, mm -hmm. and even they, they chose their words carefully. They wanted to make sure that you understood why, you know, they didn't <laughs> excuse the violence, but they understood it and they wanted to make sure the public understood, hey, this is about jobs and oppression and this and that, and people are tired. You, you have educational issues, yet and these young people, they don't have, well, I guess the, the it, you could say the intellectual capacity, but I kind of, you know, I have mixed feelings about that too, but maybe the opportunity to express themselves in a better way and receive, you know, not only, you know, attention, good attention, positive attention. We value what you have to say and how you're feeling. Uh, other than here, we have the governor coming in with, oh, more force is going to, you know, we got we got to make the white people feel safe, and we have to lock the city down. <laughs> okay, then and then what does that say to the people who have issues here? Of course, they'd have been shot if they went out into the white neighborhoods and started trying to burn up some stuff, which we've seen in, in many other cities. You can't go outside of your area and express yourself 
to that level, right. you know, positive or negative, without some immediate repercussions. Because it's all right if you do it in your neighborhood, but don't come out here. Okay, you got some issues. Yeah, we see you. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And we'll give you a bunch of lip service. But what happens tomorrow and the day mm -hmm. after that? You know, and so I was encouraged to see people tweeting, okay, tomorrow we're going to get up and we're going to clean up the city, come, yeah. you know, meet us here and there, and we're going to do that. And that showed, you know, hey, even though there was some violence going on, people here care about this. Mm -hmm. You know, we care about where we live and we want to make it better. And we need you to help us help ourselves make it better. So, I, and I wanted to make sure that that. You know, that message wasn't getting lost in all the dialogue, so I stopped listening at about noon today, so I don't know what else went on, what the conversation was, other than opportunists taking the, you know, yes. uh, that opportunity to further their own agenda, which might have been, oh, the president, this and that, and oh, it's a police state and it's a gun grab. You know, I heard all kind of crazy things online and on TV, so, <laughs> but the real issue, just like Edwina was saying, is that this has started a long time ago and it's built up and there's been no real relief. There's been a lot of lip service, a couple of band-aids here and there, but unless we all, all understand how important this is, these young people, they don't care. They, they're dying anyway. So what does it matter to them to go that next step, you know, and to just destroy everything in front of them? Because what other choice do they see? Unless you give them another choice. Okay. Unless you give them two hands, okay, not one hand behind your back, you know, with something else <laughs> waiting okay. for them. That's all they're going to see. They hear it, it the violence, the violence culture is, is inundates them from all sides, from music and video games and then movies and everything, and we glorify it. And right. just like they said in the in the text, you know, America is the, the most violent and industrialized nation on earth. And why is that? Right. But I don't think Freddie Gray woke up that morning expected to be uh, dead, to die that day, to have his back broken and his esophagus mm -hmm. crushed and. Um, I don't, I, you know, these children, uh, I, I, I think, I have four sons and, and I feel blessed. They survived the hood, per se, and um, they went on to, uh, be, uh, you know, to uh, finish their education, get college degrees, and some even joined the military and so forth. And, um, I, I had a few adolescent problems, you know, with a, a, you know, children, children see, I have to sit in the classroom with one of them uh, uh, because, uh, you know, I would drop him off at school and the next thing I know, um, you know, when I leave, he's, he's leaving the schoolhouse, <laughs> you know, to follow his friends. and. And um, and then he gets in trouble, and I'm sitting in truancy um, um, hearings, <laughs> you know. And I'm and I'm saying to myself, Lord, I know I got into this band this morning with this child and dropped him off at school. And why am I getting letters to appear at the police station in for truancy hearing? Okay, I can understand adolescent behavior and so forth. And now he's he's a security guard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one United States Marine. One yeah, that's why they, they work for the government. Okay. But then, you know, I, I always as a mother, I, I was always afraid, you know, that you know, I didn't want to get that phone call. Uh you know, to um, you know, the phone call like Oscar Grant's mother got. Your son is, you know, something happened. Come to the hospital. He's or oh, come and identify your child at the morgue. I mean, in my heart, this is something as I was always in the back of my mind. It was gnawing at me. You know, I hope 
and I pray that nothing like this ever happens to me due to the fact that I have these four boys, you know, they're um, all, you know, their ages range together, you know, and they're all adolescent boys and they got, you know, they, you know, and wh where we were living, I call myself moving away from uh, 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 bad, you know, uh, bad uh, Excuse me. Thank you. Do you need more time? Just a few. Uh, just I'm going to end by saying, get you know, so they wouldn't be involved with gangs, you know, and get them involved with uh, sports and so forth. But you know, um, as a parent, I can understand these children's frustration. You know, they they get attacked also by their environment, and then bad things happen to them, and they're afraid of the police. Hmm. They're afraid of being arrested, being stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you you raised four four boys. Uh, and they're all doing well. I have to commend you. That is a a major accomplishment. I I got one I got one through and it was nearly killed me. I was doing So but yeah, I mean I guess I, I would just say, you know, what we believe matters. What we believe matters. And um, as in the, the cases that we read about in this chapter, um, the doctors, the scientists, you know, truly approached their work believing that. Um, um, there is something in our nature, in the nature of black people, or black boys particularly, that that makes us violent, more violent than than anyone else. Um, so I like to pay attention to beliefs because I think beliefs are are stronger than facts a lot of times. Um, stronger than than reality, and and so no matter what people try to tell um, white people, and it, it's it's not just white white people. I agree with Kim absolutely. The white people that want to get it get it, and those that don't don't. Um, but you know, we, we have that image of the white people as being the problem, but even black people that are, you know, middle class or more affluent that have clawed their way out of the ghetto one way or another, um, have a tendency of looking back on the the people left in the ghetto as something less than. You know, I, I think it comes out of some kind of human need to just feel better than somebody. Mm -hmm. So you'll even find black people who are incapable of understanding the rage and frustration um, that those young people are dealing with. Um, so you know, if if we believe these children, and, and Harriet Washington makes a point in the book, if we believe these are born criminals, then, you know, what's the point in educating them? What's the point in, you know, making sure that they have decent housing and health care and all, you know, the nutrition, all the things that the rest of us want for ourselves and need? in order to function effectively in society. What's the point in giving that to born criminals? But no matter what 
these young people in Baltimore or any other city in America or uh, any other uh, uh, country where impoverished people live, no matter what they try to explain about what it's like to be over-policed, what it's like to live in poverty, what it's like to have inadequate ed education and nutrition and employment, to have no opportunities before you, what it's, what it's like to be gripped by hopelessness, you know, before you even get in the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. People are not hearing it. You know, people are not hearing it because they don't want to. And so, you know, I actually think in, in some ways destruction, I mean, certainly, you know, I do not applaud or support um, the, the violence that we saw going on in Baltimore last night. But, you know, but I do understand that at a certain level, um, destruction can be a healthy response because it, because it means that you're still alive. It means that you can still feel things. You can feel your pain. If nobody else can feel it, you can feel your pain. And so pain, whether it's physical pain or emotional pain or whatever kind of pain it is, is that, did you say time? No, um, I said right. Oh, okay. Whatever kind of pain it is, it is a signal that something is wrong and something needs to change. Something needs to happen. And sometimes you have to, to tear it up. My hair, I told you all my hair story. Now, how does a hair story get into a conversation on Rockets and Baltimore? <laughs> a, a mentally ill brain at work. <laughs> and I told you I had a bad perm and I ended up my beautician told me that I just needed to cut it all off and start fresh and so that's what I did and my hair grew back and you know then of course I, that's when I started liking the short fro but in a, it, it, I, I use a hair story to say just as I say to you all all the time, everything is everything. When we figure it out in one area, we can figure it out in other areas. And so a lot of times you do have to go down to the root. You do have to burn it down and start <laughs> fresh. And, you know, my concern is that I ask the question, what, you know, where else, what else could they have done? Because the things that they should be able to do, the, 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 the resources that should be available to them um, are, are, are not there. I mean, I liked a lot of what Barack had to say today. You might have turned off the TV by then, Georgette, but the piece that they keep replaying is where he, you know, expressed his his disagreement with the rioting. But what he also was trying to say, or what he said, was, you know, this is not new. This keeps happening over and over again, and we can keep tuning out what the young people are saying. So, okay, give me a couple. Yeah. You need more time? Six minutes? You need more time? Keep I've going. done six minutes? Yes, dear, but don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on you. I, you know, finish your thought. It's just more five minutes. Right, let me finish my thought. But, yeah. but that's, you know, I really did agree with him that he was trying to say it's all of our problem and either we can accept that and get serious about, you know, don't even talk about what the young people did. We need to be talking about what we are going to do to create real opportunities for them so that 
more and more babies don't have to come into a world where, you know, there's just no hope from day one. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. I listened to him too, and he was making those two points. Is you know, two wrongs don't make a right. But yeah. he was empathizing with these 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 juveniles, um, yeah. these, these adolescent kids. These children were in. I, it outraged. They did not want to be next. The next yeah. Oscar Grant or Michael Brown. Right, and nobody is listening. We just, you know, you know, we turn, we turn on our news, we turn on our Facebook scroll, and it's one more dead black body. And you know, at at some point, you can't even, you know, you you can't even absorb it. So. Let's move on from that because that issue is certainly not going away. Um, one thing, please, before we move on. Mm -hmm. Why is everyone treating this like a new issue? When I grew up, the same thing was going on. There were gangs. I saw people getting killed. There are black boys getting beat down by the cops then. Why is everyone suddenly saying these teenagers are angry? It's not history repeating itself. It never stopped. It absolutely positively never stopped. This is not a new revelation. Tupac, whatever. There's a lot of people before Tupac. When I grew up, it was the same thing. In the middle of the street, I saw gang wars. I saw people get stabbed and killed. I saw copies you know, you know. We just didn't have the media that we have today to bring it to you. This is nothing new. And that's what our president was saying. In fact, yes. he said, you know, he, he basically said, you know, you can keep being these phonies. Right. That, you know, show up and pretend for a day or two. Thank you. You know, that you care or you can get serious about, you know, really addressing these issues, which means putting in the infrastructure to create real change. So it's not, you know, uh, it's not rocket science, but, but we're missing something, you know, we're, I, I don't know if we're missing a heart, which is, you know, where I get into later on in this, in this agenda, you know, questions like, well, what's wrong with white people? Because really, I think at some point we need to be asking, why can't they hear? <laughs> you know, what, what is wrong? <laughs> so let's go on.